The Flamingos is a group or a flamboyance of friends who love to write and love to critique. The best part is sometimes some of us agree and sometimes we don't because we all bring our own perspective to a reading and to a question. In this podcast series, we share our perspectives on writing through questions we receive at flamingosrightnow at gmail.com. I'm Wendy Kendall, and this year the Wild Rose Press published my cozy mystery, Cat Out of the Bag. That's Cat with a K, introducing Katherine Watson, celebrated purse designer and amateur sleuth. Hi, I'm Avis Adams, and I'm an English instructor and a writer with one book of poetry published and a YA novel with an editor, so fingers crossed. Carl? Yes, my name is Carl Lee, and I also have a novel with an editor, so fingers crossed there as well. Hi, I'm Katherine Brown. I am a writer of published and award-winning short stories and flash fiction, and I am working on a YA fantasy novel. Hi, my name is Melanie McDonald, and I'm a criminal defense attorney, and I write mysteries about women who kill and the men who drive them to it. Okay, so today we're going to start with a wonderful question. It's, I've never written a novel. Where do I begin? And I love this question. It's a great question. So the novel begins with an idea, of course, and it should be something that intrigues you and you think you can develop into a full length book of approximately 50 to 100,000 or more words, depending on your genre. So what does all that mean? Well, we'll figure that out as we go along. But um, what I like to do when I'm starting a new project is to tackle answers to questions like what would happen if kids didn't have access to the internet or their technology? Which was an important question. It, it's an important question for my YA novel, Off the Grid. From there, I asked more questions. Would a storm knock out the electricity and get teens off their devices? Maybe, but that's just a short-term solution. So then I asked, what would happen if the West Coast suffered a Category 5 type storm, like Katrina or Harvey? From the second question, I saw how I could knock out electricity and cell phone towers and deny access. Um, then I began doing research. So questions and research are part and parcel of writing a novel and usually right up front in the beginning. So even if your tendency is to resist research, you will probably do some quick Google searches to answer questions as you write. And it's a good idea to keep track of all your sources so that you can refer to them later and be consistent um, with your facts throughout your novel. So, um, so in short, begin with a question or an idea and start gathering background information through research and then commence writing and or outlining. Carl, do you have notes? Avish, you know I have notes. <laughs> I agree you should begin with research, but I think you should begin researching the craft of writing first. Um, I know what it means when people ask what genre you write and what, a three, what the three act structure is all about. There are tons of books out there that'll help you with learning these things. Let your public library save you some money by checking out a variety of books on writing, then go back and purchase the ones you love. I have duplicates of some because I, want, I always want them handy. The next thing you would do is find your tribe or your flamboyant, flamboyance. In the case of this bunch of flamingos, you can do this by attending a writer's conference, by joining a professional writer's association like the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, or taking a class. Writers need other writers to bounce ideas off, to help with a bothersome word, sentence, or, or scene. Other writers help you avoid the it sounds good answer that you get um, when what you're really looking for is what's wrong with this line. Um, 
I agree with Davis. Write about something that you would want to read, something that you're passionate about. Catherine, do you have anything you'd like to add? Thanks, Carl. I do. I think that there's several things to keep in mind when you're testing out your amazing idea to see if it's strong enough to support a full novel. I write a lot of short fiction. Some of the stories are strong enough that they could and should be expanded into a novel or even a series. Some are better off left as a short piece. It doesn't make them bad. It just means that there isn't enough to sustain reader interest or even my own interest for that many pages. So how do you know? It's a good question when you're just starting out. Several elements in your story must be particularly strong. I'll cover the four that I think are most crucial for longer fiction. Number one, a compelling main character with a colossal problem. Is your main character interesting enough to keep you captivated for 80,000 words? If not, he's not going to captivate the reader either. Is their problem big enough? Can you make it worse? I gave the main character in my YA fantasy novel an unusual backstory to complicate his life as much as I could. Number two, what else do you need? A clear plot with high stakes. Novels aren't just a series of events. You must tell a complete and satisfying story. And if your main character fails, it should be devastating. Carl already alluded to the three act structure and plot, and there's a reason for that. That format is what your reader is used to. When you envision your novel, you need to know that you can write your way to a complete story. Number three, you also need an ending. It goes without saying, right? but it's a problem that a lot of beginning novelists stumble into. They have a great idea. They assume that if they just start writing, they will get to that satisfying end and then they get stuck. So it helps to give some thought to that ending early on. It may be just a sketched out finish line in the distance, but know where your story ends. And four, you finally want a theme. We hear a lot about theme, but it doesn't have to be complex. Your story probably has one whether you realize it or not. Knowing what it is early on can help you write more purposefully. Can you state your theme or central idea easily? For example, love conquers all, or power corrupts absolutely. In my YA fantasy, the theme is you may have to plan, play the hand that you're dealt, but it's up to you how you play it. Melanie, what are your suggestions for where to begin when writing a novel? Thanks, Catherine. Um, you give, um, you've given new writers lots to think about. Um, we have some disagreements. We'll discuss that in the plotters versus pantsers um, section um, a, a couple of episodes in the future, something to look forward to. Uh, I also start with an idea. I make a folder with lots of notes about possible characters. I have a big bulletin board where I put words and um, phrases um, that I'm looking at so I can see it in sort of spatial design. Um, and I also decide early on where the novel should take place. I also need to decide which genre I'm going to use. For instance, is this a YA book or an adult book? Is it a romance? Is it a hybrid um, of all these things? Um, and I look at the story and try to decide which age group best suits the story. Um, also, because um, I'm sort of a lazy person, I also try to decide whether I'm going to pick a subject that I have to do way too much research on. Am I willing to do that research? Am I willing to know what it takes to get into space? Um, am I willing to do enough research to really understand what living in medieval Europe um, would feel like? If I'm not willing to do all that research, um, to make it realistic, then I choose something else. My next step is to reread several books I loved in the same genre period. And I ask myself, what do I love about these books? Is it the characters, the story, the setting? Um, and there's nothing wrong with stealing, <clears throat> I mean borrowing ideas um, from great authors. Um, take what you need from them and make it your own. Give it your own flavor and creativity. My favorite step is to travel, if possible, to the setting of the book. Um, the book I'm writing is set in Las Vegas, and I traveled there several times, spent some time in some bars doing lots of research to get an idea of how crowded, how noisy, how confusing the casinos were. If your book is set in space, you might get a book about how it feels to be weightless. Wear something heavy around, like you would in a spacesuit. 
Um, and if your book is set in the past, what did they wear? What was the climate? What was the social structure? And the setting will affect how the characters act. And these are fun ways to immerse yourself in your story, to feel it, to explore your, what your characters are going to experience. Wendy, I know you have an overall view and can wrap this up for us. Thank you. Yes, my overview. But actually, I'm just going to agree with so many of you on this topic. I'm going to share stellar advice that I heard from best-selling author Robert Dagoni. If you want to write, you need to completely immerse yourself in the world of writing. Now, in sharing this advice, don't get me wrong, I'm not advising you to quit your day job, the one that pays the bills, but reach out to the writing community you'll find that writers are some of the most open and giving of people. Get to know them and what you can learn from them. Everyone has something helpful to share if you listen. Don't be shy, reach out to other writers in your geographic community and in your online community. Ask questions, compare notes, and make friends. Study writing, take classes, and attend writing conferences. Listen to podcasts to learn the craft. And once you learn, teach others. You know something best if you learn it, then do it, and then can teach it, even to just one other person. After attending my first writing conference, I learned so much I didn't want it to end. So I started a podcast with a writer friend, Julie Cooper, interviewing authors about the craft, Kendall and Cooper Talk Mysteries on YouTube. Now, Carl and I co-host a podcast on YouTube, A Novel Talk, interviewing authors across genres. We learn so much from other authors. Read, read books about how to write. Also, most important, I recommend reading lots of books that, that are the kind of writing that you want to write. Enjoy the books you read, then go back and reread each one so you can analyze it. What makes it work? What makes it good? What makes it memorable? I knew I wanted to write a cozy mystery and I read so very many of them before I got the idea for the plot of my book, Cat Out of the Bag. And most important, write. Just get anything you want on pages, experiment. Don't judge what you write. I have never heard of a writer or an author who wrote their book without rewrites and editing. That's right, I told I was saying rewrites plural. When asked about rewriting, Ernest Hemingway said that he rewrote the ending to Farewell to Arms 39 times before um, he was satisfied with it. You can't rewrite a blank page, so you need to write write words every day. You can even set a doable goal of number of pages a day, maybe one or half a page to start. Some days you'll be on a roll and you'll burn right past your goal. And finally, find two separate sets of people. First, find those who believe in you and support you and your desire to write a novel. They are the people who give you unconditional support on the good days and on the not so good days. They are your cheerleaders. Next, find a critique group. These are the people who also support your efforts and want you to succeed, but they are part of the writing community too. And they are objective, so they will give you objective and knowledgeable feedback on your scenes. What's good? What works well? How's your writing being absorbed by a reader? And suggestions to strengthen your scenes. Not mandatory changes, but food for thought as you map out your own writing journey. And most important, enjoy every minute of this journey that you're starting. You will learn so much about yourself and about your writing. You will meet so many wonderful people and you'll feel amazing accomplishments all along the way. And you'll have so much fun. And if you really want to hold your own novel in your two hands, if you really want to see your name as the author under the title, never give up on your dream. Even on the toughest of days, I highly recommend The Writer's Journey. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you all, Flamingos, for another wonderful session on Where Do I Begin? And thank you, fellow writers, for joining us today. We hope 
you enjoyed our podcast and learned something you can take away with you to help you in your own writing. So please send us your questions about writing to flamingosrightnow at gmail.com. No caps, no spaces. And you might see all of us taking a stab at your question and maybe we'll give you some good advice. So join us next time when Flamingos Right Now will answer the question, what's on page one? Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Bye.